So let's look at the specific structure of the nitrogenous base for the purines first. So again, the purines are, have this uh, uh, bicyclic fuse system. So the first one we're going to look at is adenine. have, so we can draw the skeleton, so the six-membered ring, five-membered ring, place your nitrogens in the proper places, okay, and then from there, we add our double bonds here, here, and then there's an amine group, there. And this is adenine. And then this nitrogen is what forms the glycosidic bond with the ribose base of the nucleic acid, or the nucleotide, excuse me. So this is adenine. All right. And then the other one is guanine. Okay, so again, draw the fuse bicyclic system. All right, and then this is going to go to the ribose. All right. Then, on this one, we're going to have a carboxyl group here. All right. And an amine group here. Okay. So notice how there are different, uh, depending on the structure of this, you have different, whoops, I missed a double bond. There we go, much better. Okay, notice how, that's guanine. Notice how the different structures change uh, whether there are different hydrogen bond donors or acceptors on the ring. This is really important for what's known as base pairing. Uh, and so, as you remember, uh, what you might remember is that A base pairs with T in DNA and G base pairs with C in DNA. So take a look at the structures. Think about uh, what uh, will base pair or what acts as a hydrogen bond donor or an acceptor and uh, think about how that might affect uh, what's called the complementarity uh, between A and T and G and C.